Welcome to another video of Do You Know What To Do? We're going to make a slip cover from a pattern for this sleep sofa. It's got six cushions and we're going to have a skirt on it as well. I'm going to show you what tools you need to complete the job and I'm going to show you how to cut it down and sew it. So let's get started. We've set out all the tools you're going to need to accomplish this project. All you're going to need is a good pair of scissors, a 12 inch torpedo level, a cloth tape, dressmaker pens, a pencil, a chalk line, blank piece of paper to write your skirt size and your band size, and about four or five yards of plain white fabric to make your pattern out of. Let's get started on making this slip cover. It's going to be a lot easier than you think it's going to be. So we're going to get started by moving back this table. We're going to take all the cushions off the sofa and start finding our center points. Now what we're going to do is find the center of the sofa. You can do what's called an open cut, meaning you're going to take your white muslin fabric and spread it out all the way over the sofa. So covering this arm, covering that arm, obviously covering the platform, the inside back. The trouble with that, it takes a lot more time. So what we can do is find half of the sofa, or if you happen to be doing a chair, the concept still applies. So we're going to take our tape measure and go from this outside arm to this outside arm. And let's just say that it's 86 inches for simplicity's sake. That would obviously be 43 inches. I would take a stick pen and put that right at 43 on my tape. And to double check that measurement, turn the tape around. So if you went from here to there, turn it from this side of the sofa back on over. Once you've already have your pen in there, and it should line up at 43 at 86 inches if you have it exactly center. We're going to do that in different spots. We're going to do that at the bottom, at the top of the platform, the inside back here, the top of the inside back, and at the bottom of the outside back. So we have this sofa completely split in half. I particularly like to work only on the left side. If you want, work on the right side. I'm going to take all the muslin fabric and I'm going to follow the pins as I laid them out with the fabric, the salvage edge, all the way across the uh, sofa. Now I've gotten both pins here. I got one here and one here at the top of the platform. I got this one by measuring on the outside of the arm. I got the top of the platform one by measuring from the cording or piping or welt, whatever you want to call it, from that arm to this arm here. Now what I wanted to show you was doing the inside here, the inside back and the inside arm, can be challenging. When you work in this area, don't press too far in. Just let your tape gently rest right up against the inside arm and then over there as well. So if you're using a cloth tape, that, that'll be fine, it'll work. Or you're just using a metal tape like this one, you can roll it like this as you go down. And then try your best to find the measurement. Uh, or the half of the sofa. And like I said, to, to test it, turn the tape around, gently put it against the inside arm when you've already put your pin in and say, ah, look at that, it does line up. So everything's fine. So let's just say simple six feet and it would be 36 inches, 36 inches across. So that'll work just fine. Now we're gonna get the outside measurement. We're gonna go from this point to this point of the sofa and find the center. I wanna give you this little helpful hint I know it's difficult sometimes doing this by yourself, so what you can do is put a little hole in the uh, cloth tape, the metal part there, and what I do is I go to the end and put a stick pin in there and it holds it there for me. 
So I'll just show you what I'm talking about. I got it right on the end there. I'm not pulling too tight either because I don't want to mess up the measurement. And then right to the end, it looks like 79. Well, it's sagging a little bit. Hold on. So 78 and 3 quarters. And then we would just find the half of 78 and 3 quarters, which is 39 and uh, 3 eighths, I believe. So let me double check that. So I'm putting the pin in at 39 and 3 eighths. I'm going to take this pin out. I can reach that distance, so I don't need to use the pen to hold the tape in place. 39 and 3 eighths looks like it's right there. You can do it as well with a metal tape. It has already a, a little slit or opening there. So if you hook it on the end, put a pen through there. It'll hold it there for you. So let me do this one, or I have this one complete. We'll do the bottom one, and then we'll start working with the muslin fabric. We did get the last pin in, so we're about to put on the white fabric to start our pattern. But do take your time when finding the center of your sofa or your chair, whatever you're doing. It's very important, so don't speed through that. Always double check, make sure that you are centered by turning the tape around once more. So let's get started by taking our white fabric. We're always going to start from the outside back. I like starting from the outside back and then going into the inside back, platform, inside arm, then outside arm. So it's very simple. Let's get started on cutting the pattern. So what we're going to do is grab your fabric, keep it folded in half. If it already is, it may be on a roll, so pull it off and fold it in half. Go to the salvage ends. Keep them as smooth and even as possible. And we're going to use, obviously, our pens as a guide. I'm just grabbing a, a portion of it, like say two inches above the uh, sofa down to the bottom, which is going to be more than enough because we're putting a skirt on this one. Folding in half. Line the salvage ends up because if they're crooked like this, you're, you're cutting your, your fabric crooked. So you're going to have to line it up there. Grab your scissors, cut that in half. And we're going to simply open this up, salvage the salvage like this. And bring the salvage in right up to the pin that you have that makes half the sofa. Or the center point of the sofa. Put an anchor pin in there. And then one at the bottom as well, right up to the, the head of the pen. So just barely covering it. And put a nice anchor pen. Incidentally, an anchor pen, a real good one, doesn't just sit in there. You actually, I'm going to do a little demonstration right here. You actually pinch the fabric like that. And then your fabric would say would be in my index finger and thumb here. So it's anchored very well. Don't just stick it in there like this. I mean, it'll work, but this pin can move. But when you pin it down like this, it really wants to stay. So that's a good anchor pin there. So what we're going to do, hold this up and just put a quick anchor pin there because you want to start from the bottom smoothing over, then the top. So remember the bottom, then the top. Don't get the top anchored and, and in position where you think it's going to stay and then start working on the bottom. It doesn't work that way. Do the bottom first. I'm just running my hand across the, the sofa there. Put an anchor pin. Now sometimes with outside backs, all they did is just lay fabric right across the upholster that is. So it's, it can be, this is nice. This is done pretty well. But it could, you know, actually because I did this one, so. But sometimes we'll just put fabric right across it and there's no foundation at all in the back there. So it's just your top cover. And that, that can be hard sometimes, keeping anchor pins in. They want to fall out and you certainly can't pinch it and do the demonstration that, or do the, the, uh, the anchoring that I demonstrated here. So just do the best you can. Put as many as you can in there because we don't want this uh, pattern fabric to move on us. So I am trying to put as many as I can in the center here. 
there's substance behind here, and that's what I mean by that. The pins want to stay in there. Just do the best you can, smooth it out. Smooth this up. Now we're going to get a piece for the inside back. We're going to roll straight down. By that is down the platform, or down the inside back to the platform, down to the skirt area, just like that. So I'm going to go around, find out where I need to cut this off. Okay, so I'm estimating that I want about a 10-inch skirt on here. So I'm going to come down about where this this piping or, or, or welt or cording is right here. I'm going to put my index finger and my thumb there, and this is where I want to cut this fabric. So I'm going to line up the sides so it's nice and straight. And this is going to be our inside back our platform material. Let's lay that up there. Now let's line it up with the pins here, the center pins. I'm going to leave about an inch or two on this side here from the, the cording hanging over. I mean the, the, the welt here on the inside back or outside back. Let's give a nice anchor pin here. We're going to anchor this before we start doing anything over here. I see my pin right here. That's a nice anchor there. I'll put a few right here. You can't pinch in the center, like I was saying earlier, but it's a good idea if you can to put it in the direction that the fabric could pull. So the head of the pin is digging in. With this one, I didn't do that, but now I will. Just like that. I'm going to roll this down. I see my pin right here. So I'm going to go over there and anchor that. I just want this fabric basically to drop right here and go into this uh, bed area or the platform. It's like we're right on the edge there, so that's good. Drop some pins down there and start anchoring them in there. Before I go over there, I'll start smoothing this off, making sure I have enough fabric up the top up here. I'm going to grab the outside back, the inside back, right at the welt area here. I'm going to put a pin there. You don't want any wrinkles here. You want to smooth it out as much as you can. These seem to be lining up pretty nicely. Put one here. So all you're basically doing is smoothing this out the best you can and putting the pins on the corners of your piece of furniture. Now let's go to the front of the platform, pin that down. See, isn't it good that I came down further down to here? We're going to go about right here, so we have plenty. We're going to cut all this off. This is where our skirt's going to begin. There's my pin right here. Let's put a good anchor in there. Like that. Let's smooth this over here. Now 
anchors. Fold this back. Now this can be a little intimidating for some people. Is how are you going to get this to go around here? That's what we need to do. We want to copy what the upholsterer did. Don't cut from here. You're going to be shortchanging yourself. So always come up from this direction. Okay? I'll show you. The great thing about the pattern is before I used to use the actual top fabric or the finished fabric, whatever you want to call it, and I would pin fit it, double cut. This is called double cutting, meaning everything was folded over so it was done twice double and with the pattern you don't have to worry about it. this is like maybe two dollars a yard three dollars a yard this is a little nicer fabric but if you're using a, a lightweight muslin fabric you can get a couple dollars a yard if you make a mistake just simply replace it sometimes when you're working with the uh, finished fabric the top fabric that's eighty dollars a yard hundred and twenty dollars a yard you make a mistake that's a problem but with a muslin it's so easy you can simply replace it so you can get a little closer is what I'm trying to tell you with your cuts. And what I'm trying to do is walk this fabric up. You can start to see that it starts to take shape as to where the fabric wants to, uh, to lay on the furniture. I can get really close here. And look at this. Just simply pull that over like that. Look at that. It's not bad. Look at that. Let's get a little corner right here. But you notice... I'm working my way around. I'm not just getting a, uh, ahead of myself and cutting too fast over here and cut it too short. But if that happens, don't worry about it. It's inexpensive fabric. We'll just uh, simply replace it. It's going to happen one day. It happens to everybody. I'm putting one more pin right here. Okay. Now we're, look at this. We're just going to put a simple dart. Here, this copies the upholsterer. The upholsterer's work. Another pin here. We've got all this excess. We don't need this. Come in just like that. I'm cutting in a half, uh, cutting up to a half inch there. That's standard. And we're going to cut all this excess off. We don't need all this. It's just getting in our way. Just like that. This here, can you see this fabric here? This is the outside back. We don't need this much. Let's just get a little closer right here. And this piece can be used, not too much right in front of the camera, but used as the um, scroll piece. So we can save that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is take another piece and do the inside, another piece of muslin that is, and do the inside arm. Okay, so we're going to start with the inside arm. I've already cut the fabric to length here. We're going to roll completely over, meaning right here we're not going to break it and uh, put pins here. We're just going to roll the fabric right on over. We're going to anchor it inside uh, this area here and then right down the outside arm. So leave yourself a little bit of fabric at the 90. What I mean by that, the 90 being the platform and then the inside arm. Leave yourself about maybe three or four inches of fabric because we need that for tucking area. So roll this down three or four inches. Try to keep as straight as you can. The end right here, eh, leave yourself maybe three inches or something. Just always try to give yourself as much as you can afford. Cutting it tight just ends up making your job a lot harder. Now remember I wanted to bring my skirt up to about 10 inches so we got plenty of room here. 10 or 9 inches I'm going to do on the skirt. Put an anchor, an, an anchor pin in the center there. Just like that and roll off to the edges or to the sides. Not pulling real hard but definitely making sure that it lays down flat the best you can. The great thing about muslin, it seems to have the uh, the perfect, well this is actually a linen here, so this is not really a muslin, but a muslin will do the same thing. It has a very good body, so it wants to hug the furniture, and so does this uh, linen here. Go from your center down at the bottom, 
to an anchor pin. Now before you go any further, I want you to take your tape measure and make sure you've left enough room for your skirt because you're obviously going to have to go past your skirt height. So let's just say we want a 10 inch complete finished skirt. Well, obviously I'm going to need at least nine and a half, right? So we're down there seven and a half, so we're good because we're going to cut our, make our line for our skirt at nine and a half. So when we sew up, it'll be finished 10, but I'll explain that more later. Okay, so let's work around this area here. Make it smooth here. I need to cut around this area. The easiest way to do that is lay this down flat and find out what the fabric really wants to do. So we're going to have to do some kind of a cut here. So this part, once it's cut, will wrap around nicely right around here. And that, that's what we're looking to do, okay? So, remember, we want to come from this area. We don't want to come from this area. I'm going right to this corner here. Corners are always what we're working toward. See, look at this. See, so we're almost there, right? So now if I just take my scissors and cut straight down here, we should be okay. I don't want to take too much. I'm pulling this down to make that smooth. And a lot of excess fabric. We do not need this much. So I like just making it easy and do a little cleanup. Throw that off over there. Incidentally, I've been around other people who would cut. They'd throw their fabric all over the floor and then they'd have to spend time cleaning it up. Throw it all over in one corner of your of your uh, furniture, even if it's a chair. Just tuck it in the side so much easier at the end just to clean up rather than run around picking it up all off the floor. Okay, so we're going to anchor right here. You don't want to stab yourself with your anchors. Put it through and then run it through again. Because I've come up and really stuck myself with those pins by not doing that. Okay, so now what we want to do is start making the fabric want to lay down this tuck-in area here. Just coming out like that at this angle. I'm not going straight down because I might shortchange myself. Let's pull this down over here. And we're just going to take a stick pin and start pinning it where the tuck in area is. Can you see that okay here? It's right there. Now I'm just going to pin straight down here. And any relief cuts that I need, because the fabric's wanting to get uh, bulky or what have you, I'm just going to simply snip in toward the tuck-in area, and that makes it lay down flat. Just like that. And I'll give you a better angle in a moment. We're going to bring this around. Pin where the arm meets the inside back. A little pin there and just, just snip up to the pin. You can take all that excess away. Let's put an anchor pin right there. Let's do one more. It's looking good. Now we're going to pin the outside arm and the um, outside back. Okay, so now what we're going to do is pin the outside arm with the outside back. This particular piece needs a zipper, and I'm glad because some of them don't need a zipper. So I'd like to make it a little bit more challenging for you. Hopefully you don't need one where this can just slide right over. And if it could slide right over or the way they can slide right over, is this isn't protruding out. Okay, sometimes they're just straight down. 
If it's straight down, you don't need a zipper. You, you should be perfectly fine. We used to put a zipper in everything, but the truth is you don't need one. You don't need them on Parson chairs. You don't need them when they're straight down like this. However, since this is protruding out, so what I mean by straight down is if this was eliminated, unfortunately the arm is, is mimicking the front, so it still has a scroll. So what I need to do is make a zipper go from here down through the skirt because I'm not going to be able to get this thing on, and, and I'll show you why. If this being pinned and sewn here, obviously this is a uh, tighter distance left to right than here to the other side of the arm, left and right. So this being sewn, I'll never get past here, not that one at the same time. So that's why we need a zipper. And you can do it one or two ways. Uh, well, you can do it three ways. I'm, I'm going to show you what I think to be the easiest and cleanest look. You could put one right down the center. Okay, people did that years ago. A lot of people don't like that because sometimes sofas are sitting out and um, people can see the zipper going down the center of the outside back. You could put a zipper running up from, from, from here up to about right here at this point. That's going to get a little complicated with your, your intersections coming in. So I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that the best is follow the outside back straight line right down like this. I think that might be the easiest and um, the cleanest look. So let, let's do that. What we can do too is I cut a little too much off, but I think I'm going to be okay. Just take this whole piece here and pinch this over. So right now there's the end. Right now I have it where the end of the um, outside back is. Let's put a pin there. And then we're going to try to keep it as straight as we can. Straight down like that. We could try like this, but that gets a little crooked. So I don't think that's a good idea. It gets uneven. So let's let's go as far as we can since I didn't leave us a whole lot of fabric. All I need is a half inch, meaning a half inch right here. Get straight on it to see how straight I am. Let's anchor this. There and there. I'm trying to make sure that I don't take too much away here because I'm going to need some um, fabric for pinning there. And let's just try to make as straight as line as we can with our pins. You see, I'm taking too much away right here. So let me just roll it back a little bit. Let's anchor this. Let's take that pin there. We don't need that anymore. I put a little anchor in there. Let's, um, let's do another one here. And let's pin straight down. Now, had I left enough fabric, I, would ha I wouldn't have to be so meticulous. I could go a little faster. But one thing I like about the pattern is we're going to be doing some drawing in a moment, some outlining, I should say. So we can get right up where the seam is supposed to go, and I'll explain that to you when we get to that point. So I've left enough fabric here. It looks okay. Let's just put a pin here. And let's work our way around the scroll, going down, outside arm, outside back, try to keep that as straight as we can, and we're just going to pin straight down to the bottom. Just like that. And here, I'm taking this anchor pin. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so basic, oops, basically what we're going to do is we're going to put a zipper here. The fabric's going to stay here. Obviously, fabric here. Zipper right up to about this point. And we'll be able to get past this scroll arm here. So now I need to start pinning along up here, but I'm going to cut this first. I'm going to cut this free. Let's 
straight down. Oops. Uh -oh. Okay. Started to run off a little bit there, but it's okay. Okay, so now we're going to finish pinning up along here. This fabric's a bit much right here, so let's clean this up a little bit. We don't want this getting in our way. Now, earlier I've already put pins in right here. So now let's finish this point up. This is a little too much, too. Let's clean that up. This right here would be easier if I can, the, the sofa ends right there, so I'm just going to get a little close right there. There, it makes the fabric lay down a little easier. Just simply follow the contour of the furniture. Just like this. where it ends. Now this piece is going to have to join with this piece. This is where our zipper is coming in. So this can be a little bit complicated. I'm going to take this out, okay, and we're going to join the zipper in with this. So this scroll piece is going to stop where the inside back wraps around here and meets with the outside back. So before I had it going all the way up, we're going to take this out. We're not going to do that. We're going to have once again inside back wrapping around to the outside back. And the zipper will come up to around the top of the scroll here. So pretty much where this intersection is, the zipper is going to stop here. All we have to do is just get past this center point. That's all we got to do. If we can get this zipper to come up to here, this whole thing's going to open up and it's going to be a lot easier to get on. It's going to make it possible to get it on, I should say. So I'm going to put one more pin right here. This is pinned. The inside. Let me readjust that pin a little bit. The inside back to the top. Of the arm I'm working right now inside back to the outside back right here and I'm working in this little corner right here this little intersection just like that we can give a little relief right there so get that to lay down in there it looks pretty good so our little intersections right here. Look at that. See how it opens up real quick when I cut that? It was under some pressure. This is too much excess. We don't need all this much. Okay, this is definitely too much. So that's when we mark for our skirt. I'll explain that when we get to that point. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit toward the piping and the cording no more. I mean, uh, not, not closer than a half inch. So just to a half inch right here in this area. And the same for this part as well. That'll make more sense because when we do our chalk line, these um, pieces of fabric won't get in the way. Now let's go to the front, front of the scroll. Okay, now we're going to finish the uh, front scroll up here. And pull your fabric forward, put an anchor right here. Do it the best you can. Pull this back. Make some relief cut. Don't, don't get too close though. I'm just doing this so it folds over a little easier. Just like that. Grab a piece of scrap fabric or a piece of fabric we put aside that's definitely long enough. So we see that. Anchor this on the front. Just 
about three anchors in. Start at the top here and simply pin where the furniture ends. Like that. Work your way around the scroll here. Actually, you know what? Work your way up in this direction. Try that. Work your way up from the bottom up. What we want to do is work out the excess. You might need to put a pleat there. It really depends. Uh, usually, you don't need to. It usually works its way out when you start sewing toward the platform. Um, so if, if you're having a problem on your scroll, come up a little bit higher. Usually it's when the, the uh, scroll is dipping down lower and there's a lot of padding up here. So just bring your, your pins up higher and you should be okay. That, that'll reduce some of it. If not, just, just put some nice, um, you can put some pleats like that. You can roll it over or you can do darts. The dart is when you cut it. A pleat is when you roll it over. So I'm going to try to keep as many pleats and or darts. I'm taking this one back out. I'm going to work it this way. Out. I want mine just to be smooth right around. Make sure it's looking good. It's looking Good on the front. I'm getting low on pins. It's like that. Work your way down. Right down to the platform. Might need to put an anchor here. Under the platform, let's put one over here. Like that I'm just about to reach the platform area. And then we're going to pin the outside arm to the scroll. And we'll finish this up and then we'll trim it up a little bit. So now we're going to work on the platform area, and this is all excess fabric right here, so let's clean that up and get it out of our way. We definitely don't need this much. Like that. Now with the sleep sofa, it makes it a little bit more challenging because it just keeps dropping down. What I need is my, my uh, tuck-in area is going to start here at the uh, nose front platform area and then back to about right here. So I need to get a straight line from there, from here rather, over. Now that looks to be pretty straight there. All we want to do, I'm bringing this fabric up, I'm not having it dip too much. We're going to leave plenty when we cut it on the table tuck in. And then we're bringing it up right up in this corner here. Right there. We're going to put a pin in there and I'm going to cut the fabric. Right there, that looks pretty good there. So now we're going to pin the scroll area. To the platform. Incidentally, you can see I cleaned all this up here. So just get the excess out of your way. We're going to pin. Or continue to pin 
from this center one toward the back. I'm trying to make it where this line is somewhat level with the platform here. And then we'll add tuck in, like I said, when we cut the, the finished fabric on the table. Just like that. Let's cut this off. We don't need this. And actually, we don't need all this. Now I'm going out, by the way. I'm cutting out. Don't cut in. You're going to get that area cut out like that. This here is going to be too much fabric. And you can start to see the slip cover, half of it, taking shape. Now we're going to do the inside arm, the inside back area. I'm just trying to find out where the two meet. And I'm putting the pins there. That's all I'm doing. Right down where they intersect at the platform area. Take this anchor pin. We don't need that anymore. Let's cut this excess off. Just like that. Now, we're pretty much done as far as the tuck-in area. Well, actually, we're, 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 we're pretty much done. So now I'm going to pencil everything. That's why we had the pencil out there earlier. We're going to take the pencil and make a pencil mark on the inside of the welt or piping, not on the outside. The pins are pinned on the outside of the welt. We're going to go right where the cording and the furniture meet. So inside that little groove, we're going to take our pencil and we're going to be making those marks all over the slip cover. Okay, so we're just going to follow the cording mark. So you just take your finger there and you find out where the cording is. Follow that all the way down. I still have the cording running down here. Now, if you didn't have any cording there, just try to follow the pen area or the pens that you put in. Just like this. And now you're getting the front, you see? So you're just going to keep on following this all the way around. On the inside of the welt. If you need to, you can cheat and go underneath here. Remember, do it on both sides. Don't just do it on one because the inside arm here needs a guide as well. Just like this, we're going to go all the way around. I'm going to do this all over the whole entire slip cover. And even right here where I just rolled over, I'm going to do a straight line. You can cut that on the table if you need or if you want. You don't have to. We can just make it all roll straight on over for our slip cover. And that's less sewing, which is very nice. I'm making a simple line there. That's it. I'm going to mark all this, all this. I'm going to mark up here on the inside back. I'm going to mark along here where the pins are. Everything's going to get a mark. And it makes more sense when we get back at the table why I'm doing it this way. You can do it another way if you want. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can take your scissors and cut a half inch outside your pens all over. So you'd have to do that along the scroll all the way down here along here as well, and um, anywhere that you have your pins other than your tuck-in area, you need to leave more for that. But we're going to add the tuck-in area, or the tuck-in fabric, I should say, at the table. 
when we cut for the top fabric. So we're not going to do that now. I used to do it where I would do it freehand with the, with the pens. It's a lot more complicated that way. That's when I was using the top fabric, um, cutting the slip cover. So now we just do it by a pattern on the table. It is so much easier, and I think you're going to really like it when, I, when we get to the table as far as uh, how many slip covers you can cut at once. So I'm going to go ahead and pen this or uh, pencil this, all the outline, and then I'll show you the next move. So now I just finished making the mark there for the tuck-in on the platform area. I want to give you a little tip. When any intersections come together, I'll show you one up front in a second. We got one right here. So basically where this pleat comes to the outside back, I'm going to make a little mark. I'm just going to make a T mark. I'll show you up here. There's an intersection coming in from the platform, inside arm, to the scroll area. So I made a little mark right here, and we just like putting a little T mark. And that way, when we're sewing, we know that this is where the platform, the inside arm, and the scroll are to meet at this intersection, or T. You can use any symbol you want. We just use a T. So do that throughout the slipcover. We got one there. I've got one right here. I've got another one that is right here on the outside scroll mark. Any part you need a T. And if we were to cut here, which we did not, we would need one on this side too. But now, since we just rolled it straight on over, we don't need one. And I'm going to mark as well where I want my zipper to end. So I'm just going to make a little mark right here and write zipper. And that's where I want it to end so we know when we're cutting on the table where to stop. I put zipper stop there. I made all my marks on the uh, slip cover so now I know where I'm going to be cutting the finished fabric on the table. Now the next thing we want to do, why did I have a torpedo level? And I'll show you. Let me grab that torpedo level and explain that to you. I know it's not 100% accurate but trust me this will get you out of um, trouble when you're using a stripe or any uh, pattern that needs to stay straight. Sometimes the inside backs of a piece of furniture really lean back and when you put it on the table everything looks kind of askew. so when you lay this up there I'm going to do the inside back first when you lay this up there and try to get the level put the little the little ball right there in the center of those two marks the best you can I understand it's not 100 percent but it's close as far as being straight so the ball is right in the center I'm taking my pencil making a mark making an arrow I'm doing that on the outside back. I'm going to do that here as well. I'm going to lean over and you just extend your pencil. That's it. And that gives you something to go by. I know you can use the edge too as a straight line, but this does seem to help, especially on the arms here. We've had problems in the past where we didn't have these lines and it looks like it's straight and it's not. So this can really save you when you find yourself in that situation. So the arrow as well tells you which um, direction the fabric goes. So when it's on the table, it, it gets kind of confusing when it's all one piece. So you know the arrow is going up. Uh, another indication is when on the table to know what is what, just put um, I, I beast for inside back and it would be um, SP for seat platform as well right here I'm going to do O for outside B outside back and I just put that in big letters and then right here I'm doing OA it's right there and I already have my arrow the scroll as well we're going to make sure that the arrow is straight I'm going to um, put a straight line there. So that helps when we're cutting on the table as well. So make sure you get all your, your marks where your cording or your welt is. Make sure all your intersections have the T mark so you know when you're on the table where they're supposed to meet up. Make sure you have all your identifications, the inside back, the um, inside arm, which I haven't done yet, outside arm, outside back, and the scroll. You know what the scroll looks like. Just make sure you get the arrow and SP for seat platform. 
Okay, now that we have all our arrows and identification of the inside back, inside arm, we're going to mark for our skirts. I think I'm going to make this one a little bit easier where you just pretty much have the skirt start at the platform where it drops off. And it looks to be about 12 inches. So I'm going to mark where I want my skirt to be. And we have to have a half inch of sewing. So I can't do 12 because when it's sewn, it'll be up here. So we're going to mark at 11 and a half. So when the sewing's done, the skirt's going to be sitting about right here. I'm going to make this mark 11 and a half all the way around. Now incidentally, I'm going to tell you a little trick. Sometimes the outside backs, when we get around there, they will tilt back quite a bit. And it's very hard to get an accurate measurement with a tape when the inside back is kicking back like this. Let's just say it's going this direction. That's not an accurate measurement. So what you can do is the nicer tapes here will tell you how many inches it is from here to here. This one is two and a half in, or two inches. So if I need to have 11 and a half mark, I'm just touching the carpet here. I'm not pressing down too far. Then I would have to um, deduct two inches from 11 and a half, which would be nine and a half. So I would bring this down to nine and a half and get another measuring device. And from that end to this end is 11 and a half. So then you could lay this down like this in the back and the outside back can be protruding out like that and you just make your mark because it's way too hard to get your hand in there and make that mark. So you could use it even like this if you like. So it's 11 and a half there. And then I'll make a mark here. make a mark here. As you can see, it's pretty much lining up where the intersection is, is going to be. So where these come together, that's where the skirt's going to start. I'm going to make a mark here. And I'm going to do that all the way around at each part of uh, the slip cover. So when I finish that, I'll come back. Okay, so now just double check all your marks and make sure that your pencil marks are at the desired height. And ours was 11 and a half. So what I do as well is I take this, this chalk line and I'll start to uh, pin it here. I have a, a little anchor pin inside this bag. And incidentally, I want to warn you, if you've got white carpet or any, any, any carpet like that that you're concerned, when you pull this string out, that chalk's going to fall down on the carpet, get this scrap fabric and lay it down because it will make a mess and it will not come out. So do not use this if you're concerned you're going to be dropping chalk. You can make these marks if you like at the uh, table. So you may not even need to use this if you don't want to. You can do that. Um, so I like to use a chalk. It makes it easier for me. And all I'm going to do is get it started. See, nothing fell. Well, a little bit did, but not much. But I have that fabric there. I'm going right where my first pencil mark is. And I'm going to hold this back or pull this back. I got it on that one there and that's it. Leave it here. See this is what I was telling you earlier. You might have a problem if the fabric's too long. It's a little long there but it should be okay. So I'll make the mark there. Here. I'm going to do this all the way around. I'm just going to walk it around. I'm going to move my fabric. Move your fabric as you go around the slip cover to make the chalk mark. And I'm just going to follow my pencil marks and snap the, the, uh, snap the line. Okay, so now we're going to get the measurements of our seat cushion. We have three of them. And what you can do, you can do one or two things. You can trace it with a, a piece of fabric there. Or if there are squares, then you can just use your measurements. So you go from the inside of the cording to the inside. Always start with your left to right when you're facing it. And then your front to the back. So your width and then your depth. So I'm going to go from inside the cording to the inside. I'm getting 23 and a quarter inch. And then from the front, or the back to the front, is 23. So to double check that, first let's write those down. The width was 23 and one quarter by 23. And we're going to need the band size. So we go from cording to cording. Inside, really, where it's sewn. I'm getting four and a half. 
If you want to give a little bit more of a crown, you could do four inch and then squeeze it in there and it'll be fine. It'll give it a little bit more of a crown there. So uh, let's, uh, let me double check to see what this is. It probably was originally a five. Well, four and three quarters I'm getting here. So if we say, let's do four and a quarter. Let's do four and a quarter. And then I'll make it a little more tight. So let's just say four and a quarter finished bands. Okay, that's boxing or bands. But to double check to make sure that's right, do all three or two of your cushions because sometimes they'll make a center cushion smaller. I guess it's coming up 23 and a quarter by 23. So I think it's all the same. Usually they are. The older styles, they would make a center one bigger. Okay, we're, we're good. So 23 and a quarter by 23 by four and a quarter. Now, the backs, you could do by measurements, but we're not going to. It's going to be easier just to trace it. Smooth it out the best you can. Get a piece of your scrap fabric that will obviously fit. Okay, covers all angles. Simply take your pencil. And do be careful. If you have white fabric underneath here or something, don't be bearing down hard with your pencil because we don't want to make any pencil marks. In there as well. So double check and make sure you're not uh, you're um, not not transferring the the pencil to the uh, finished upholstery fabric. Just put this down here. Find yourself your your cording. Make sure it stays smooth. You can put some stick pins in there or anchor pins. And I'm going to simply trace this. When I'm done, I'll show you that, and then we'll get the band size of that. Okay, so now I trace the, um, the, what we call, some people call a bullnose cushion or a half T cushion because it doesn't have the other T, so they call it a half. But I trace this and I put two because I need two of those, one for this side, one for that side. Three inch is the band size, I put that there. And incidentally, if you make a mistake and you're, you're marking this, like I did, I came in too much, just put little hash marks there so when you get to the table, you know you don't want this one. You want that one. Maybe make the other one that you do like a little darker. That's it. So we have this. This is our pattern here. I'll set that aside. I as well measured this. This was simple. 23 and a quarter. Hence that makes sense. The seat cushions are 23 and a quarter. So that means this would fit with the seat cushion. This is the zipper side here. So 23 and a quarter, 17 and a quarter from bottom to top. And the band size is going to be uh, three inches as well. So we're done with the cushions. We've traced the ones that we need to trace that are easier to trace than actual measure. I measure the ones that we can measure. And um, that's, that's pretty much it for the slipcover now. Okay, I just finished transferring all the information of the band size, the cushion cover size, and the skirt size completed on the seat platform. I do that for added security in case I misplace that piece of paper. So you could skip the paper if you want and just write all your information on the seat platform and you're sure to have it. So you saw the completion of making the pattern for this sleep sofa slip cover. And we're going to have another video showing you how to cut the fabric that you want of your choice on the table out in the shop. And then the next video, the third video, is going to be sewing it. So we appreciate you watching it. We hope that this did help you out on this series of Do You Know What To Do?